black, 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 cisgender, black. heterosexual, identified men are killing black trans women. Black ones. We are not talking about it in the church. Those street guys black, black, are already black, engineers. Black. If they're mixing drugs and stuff together, they're chemical engineers. If you're just like, yeah, let's kill 50 cops just because, you know, that's only a fraction of the black people that they black, kill. Black people Wait, now you're talking about my wife. For those of you who are joining in, we are talking about just the housing in the black community and owning property, why it's important, and how to get yourself in there. When I think of financial literacy, I just don't think of the the classroom work, I think some of it is practical application. I'm scared, especially you know, calling them to arms, talking about poll workers or poll watchers. That is rooted in history of voter suppression and intimidation. Black, Joe Biden needs to make that a part of his educational platform. Call that black shit out! I don't see much value in you speaking in tongues, and yet when you speak in English, you don't say nothing for my, for my people. Many of the reasons why we're dying is because of the conditions we live under that, that cause our health to be so bad and that cause it's the food, it's the water, it's clean that shit up first. When their fathers have prostate cancer, I had like a 150% chance of getting cancer, being diagnosed with cancer. I had a friend that did a raw vegan diet, 20 years remission, had thyroid cancer, never had surgery. I'm like, that's what I'm doing. This week in Black People Shit, Baby Fat, Obesity, Obesity, Nutrition, and Our Black Kids. I'm your host, Christy Ferris. In a study done by the National Heart Association, it indicated that out of the 23.5 million kids and teens in the U.S., one in three are either overweight or obese. Why can I say the word right now? Obese, yeah. But like most things in America, obesity doesn't affect all children equally. Because on average, 23.5 white male children and 29.2% of white female from ages two to 19 suffer from obesity. Whereas 33% of black males and 39% of black female ages two to 19 are overweight or obese. Today, we have Noni Robinson, nutritionist and founder of Black Girl Eat, to discuss this growing trend and what we can do to prevent it. And as always, we have actress Janora McDuffie and Abdul Majid, the writer. What's up, hey, baby? Hey, hey. What 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 What's going on? Y'all doing okay? Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good. You all right, McDuffie? I am. Can you guys hear me? You probably yeah, can. Are you. Oh, you can? Oh, yay! Hey, I'm even better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a nice shirt you got on there, McDuffie. What kind of shirt? I said, shirt that's a nice shirt. Oh, Good, nice you. color. This is my um, I'm ready for a vacation. Um, I need an island with some sun and some blue water shirt. Please, no. now. Thank you. Yeah, I'm right I there with you. That. Yeah, me too. So we'll make yeah. sure. We're going to jump into these hot topics real quick, but then we're going to make sure we get to your tree. But don't forget to, li uh, to like and subscribe and share this week's episode. And if you'd like to join in on the conversation, please make sure that you uh, click on the link in the chat because we would love to hear from you. So with that being said, how did it, how did it say thanks <laughs> from Christy Ferris? That didn't come from me. Um, Oh, because you have Christy Ferris under your name, Janora. <laughs> we got two Christy Ferris's in the house. I know they might not be able to handle two Christy Ferris's. I, no, I love it. I love it. Okay, so um, so this week, um, Kobe Bryant was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, what a you know beautiful moment. His wife spoke about it. Um, Paul Pierce was also uh, was um, into the Hall of Fame. Chris Bosh, Bill Russell, Lauren Jackson. So, congratulations to everyone. Um, what were your thoughts about uh, if you got a chance to see it? Because I only got a chance to see the clips and everything. What, um, Vanessa was saying his wife. What were your thoughts, Janora? Uh, I actually got a chance to see a good portion of it live, which was really exciting because it was history in the making. And it was, I know Kobe Bryant is the main title or the headline of all of it, but every single person that they honored 
made a difference and blazed a trail. They had everybody from Tamika Can Catchings from the WNBA, um, the, the the female amazing coach um, from, from um, yes, Kim Mulkey. Thank you, my wife, who is just right there because we yes, worked together yes, um, yes. From, from BYU. And in fact, uh, she won three national women's championships from BYU, but they have a a statue on their campus of everyone but her, not everyone, but but some of the other prominent male male uh, coaches in their their system in history, except for her. But she she was amazing. Michael Jordan escorted her to the stage. And another uh, very important person for me in terms of my own journey and, and where I've been in the world is actually Tim Duncan. Because I know Abdul's going to talk all about Kobe. He's going to cover that in. And Kobe should always be talked about. He's an amazing man. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to let you handle that, Abdul. But I'm going to just give a shout out real, real quick to Tim Duncan. So again, North Carolina, went to University of North Carolina, that's ACC. So Tim Duncan went to Wake Forest. But his story was amazing. He's from the Virgin Islands, never even picked up a basketball until he was 14 years old and just there happened to be some like alumni of uh, uh, event or or something where some guys were in, on the island playing ball saw him play uh, one of the guys was connected to Wake Forest and told the coach at that time to give Tim Duncan a, a look so it's just very interesting everybody's journey to wherever that wherever they are wherever they end up because i actually because tim duncan doesn't have like this huge larger than life personality i think a lot of times outside of the court he went under the radar so just to learn in this beautiful hall of fame uh program that they had just a little bit about him and made me respect him more so that is a really long story to say i enjoyed the program thank you for asking christy Absolutely. How about you, Abdul? I, uh, man, pretty. Yep. I, uh, I was gonna, I wasn't gonna talk about actually about Kevin, uh, about, um, Kobe Bryant, because I do believe Kobe Bryant deserves every flower that he's been getting praised by everybody. But I, I when I think, I think of guys like Chris Weber, who was also inducted, I think, um, uh, uh, who's an amazing basketball player, the Fab Five. You know, I, to me, he didn't really reach his full potential when he was at Sacramento, but he was an amazing player, just an amazing power forward. Guys like Kevin Garnett, like Kevin Garnett is an insane just basketball player, his enthusiasm for the game. But the real big one, the one I was the most proudest of for a multitude of reasons was Bill Russell. Bill Russell wasn't inducted for being a player. He was inducted as the first black coach. Yeah. So, so the, the Bill Russell things, I think people underestimate Bill Russell's talents and abilities because he was a player and he was a coach at, the, at one time. I mean, player coach at one time, but he was, he was the heart and the brains of that team. And I think a lot of times, especially when you look at athletics, uh, and maybe something we may talk about with regard to the, uh, CTE thing in terms of when it comes to black male athletes, they don't look at them as like intelligent. They just think we're all just brawn and athleticism and can jump and run. But a lot of these guys, Bill Russell being one of them, are the are the are the brains of the operation, and they don't get it the, the credit that they deserve for being as intelligent and coming up with plays and and being able to be a on court general and being able to be the coach on the court when the when they wouldn't listen to the coach on the side. So. Mm -hmm. Kudos to Bill Russell and, and all the guys who don't, especially a lot of these basketball players. Kobe Brown was one of them who knew the X's and O's and, and knew the game inside and out and don't get the credit for being as smart as they really are uh, in their sport. Well, uh, our guest on the show said, uh, Noni said, uh, the truth, Bill is a voice for the black community as well. Yes. So, and he spoke up so much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Boston, no, as racist as Boston was. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course uh, Paul Pierce being from Boston, uh, he was mm -hmm. there too as KG, well. KG, KG, so, Boston, yep. Yeah. Um, so, hi, Janor. Um, since you were you brought up that whole thing, <laughs> since you brought up that whole thing about um, you know just the black men who are in football who are getting um, concussions, 
Oh, did you want to talk about that real briefly? Since we didn't have that on the list, but you can. Bring yeah, there's a, there's, there's a uh, sort of a, a, a lot, not sort of. There's a class action lawsuit going on with the NBA with regards to CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. I believe it's pronounced, with uh, just brain, just brain. Uh, messing up the brain with head to head injury and things of that nature. And one of the things that they've had for a long time is that. Uh, yeah, NFL, you said NBA. I was going to NFL, NFL, yeah, NFL, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Robinson. Uh, the NFL is, is that they had a lower standard for uh, a high, black males had to have a higher standard of um, cognitive testing done to them because they believe that black men were dumber than the white players. So in order for the black males to get uh, the money for CTE from the NFL, they're testing, they're, they're, they, had to have, they had to have a higher level of the, of the testing, which is insane because they're pretty much just saying black people are dumber. So you couldn't tell if they had CTE or not because they were lower, lower uh, cognitively than the white players. So basically, so if you guys are listening, um, I don't know if you guys saw that movie Concussion, the one that Will Smith did. Um, and so all of these uh, you know, football players are getting concussions. And now that they're trying to get you know, disability, trying to get money mm -hmm. to help them out, they're not giving it to the black players because they're saying that, oh, well, we can't tell the difference between, is it the con concussion or are you just dumb period and so that's why they're not they're not giving that's, why that's, not, that's not paying so yeah. the more white players are getting paid out of this fund that they were that they that they had after this lawsuit that they had the more white people white players getting paid out within the black ones because of the testing because the testing standards for the white players and the black players were uh were different mm -hmm. yeah, which is so, racist yeah. as, as the nfl normally is so of course, of course. Yeah, it is sad, uh, Kimberly. Um, it really is sad. So with that, uh, we'll move on uh, since Janela is back. We're going to go on to, um, we, I don't know if you guys get a chance to see back in the uh, back in the day when Obama was, um, was in office, but Damon Weaver was a child reporter who interviewed him, um, but he died of natural causes at 23, according to his family. So, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was pretty sad to see, um, you know, just to hear about this at, at 23, such a bright kid. Uh, mm -hmm. So any um, any comments from that, Abdul? I just, it's sad. They said it was from uh, for natural causes. And uh, from, what his, <clears throat> from what his sister said, he was in college get a journalism degree, about to pursue his career as a journalist. I thought the whole, do you want to be my homeboy question was cute from, you know, uh, for the little kid asking the president that. I just find it sad that, like this is the second story I've heard about something like this, where these kids are on the rise. There was a young girl in Chicago a couple of years ago who was also at the White House. I think she did a poem or something to that effect. And she got, and she also died, but she got, it was a, uh, a bullet, she died of a drive-by or something like that. There were gang shootings and she passed away in the process. So I just, I think it's sad whether it be him or her or a load of these other black children in these communities who have talent and so much to offer losing their life at such an early age, that's all. Yeah, one of the things that he that, uh, he focused on his interview, if you guys didn't know, on education in the U.S. and included a suggestion that school lunches consist of french fries and mangoes every single day <laughs> so cute janora your thoughts i wouldn't be mad at french fries and mangoes every day for lunch um yes god bless him in his life and what a testament even if it's 23 short years that he left a mark and i think it's a reminder to all of us that we do not know the hour or the date where we are to depart this place so make it count and so God bless him for, for leaving a mark, for having an opportunity to do what some people dream of doing. You know, that question, you can interview one person in history or present, uh, politician, celebrity. Uh, uh, President Barack Obama is a popular answer to that question uh, that fulfills folks' dreams. So for him to be able to do it 
and and during his short 23 years on this earth. Yes, God bless him. And I think that's great. I think we should always not take for granted the time we have here. It is not guaranteed that we're going to live to 99. So do it while you can. Yeah. With you. Um, what happened to my notes? I have my little notes already. And oh. while you are looking up your notes, I'll just say hey to Jasmine, who is in the house. She says hey to everybody here on uh, VPS. Yes. And of course, uh, Kimberly, I love when you check in. Her first comment was come to Jupiter. You guys might not know what she's talking about. She's not talking about the planet. She's talking about Jupiter, Florida, which is where she is checking in from in terms of traveling to a beautiful uh, location. So beautiful locations are always better with your girlfriend. So Kimberly, I'm gonna take you up on that soon. I love it. Uh, so now I wanted to move on to the fact that there are some shows that have been canceled and some that have not been, uh, that have been canceled and some that have been renewed. Um, some of the black shows, uh, Blackish, uh, it was canceled, Black Lighting, um, Light, yeah, Black Lightning, uh, Mixish. And then of course we have some great shows that have been renewed, which was uh, Black AF, Lady, a black Lady Sketch Show, yay! Grownish, Keenan, Last G, Queen Sugar, Sugar uh, Sisters, Woke. There's a couple of other ones that I had on my list, but um, somehow I lost my notes. Uh, what were your thoughts? Have you guys watched any of these shows? I know For Life was also canceled. That's another yeah. show, and All and All Rise was canceled as well. Um, who CBS? They had their uh, Simone, uh, Simone. Yeah, uh, she was the first. Um, black woman to head a show on CBS. Uh, so I was really disappointed about that. I'm also being canceled. But um, your thoughts on that, Janora? I think, uh, yeah, some shows come, some shows go. We can never predict a tale. But as long as there are brown ones that are rotated in that circle of love and attention on network TV, I'll be OK. So. I am sad to see some of them go. I will admit that I am not an avid TV watcher. I am more so an avid binger. So I kind of wait for them all to uh, go on to a streaming platform so I can get that fix of just 12 to 24 hours of straight TV watching. But I am happy to see diversity on, on, on the network, on, on the airwaves. So let's keep it up. I love it. I love it. How about you, uh, Abdul? I, I like. I, I thought mixes would go soon. It, it seems like after a while, when you start to do a spinoff of a spinoff of a spinoff, sometimes the third or fourth one tends to get watered down, and it's not as good. And even though I did like, uh, I did like mixed dish. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I'm sad to see Blackish go because that was a staple. That was like this generation's Cosby Show for a minute. But it seems like a lot of these networks are having a hard time finding that balance with regards to black shows and in, in, in the space with because black people tend to be are leaning towards if you look at the numbers are leaning towards streaming more than they are traditional television. So shows like For Life and shows like Mixish and shows like Blackish that were on network television, they were getting the numbers because you can't. From what I understand that I know right now, you can't like binge watch the whole thing. When they first come out of you know what i mean so yeah you have to watch but but, it, but it's good to see that black shows across the board are getting spaces in all avenues whether it be a youtube show or a uh, or a hulu show or a netflix show and then you got you know paramount they got their shows coming out so i do like the fact that sad to see these black shows going but there's so many coming up the pipe if you really look even you got an all black channel called you know all black which is just which is mahogany's on that channel so i mean so there's a lot of there's a lot of show uh black shows that you can watch on a variety of uh networks and services oh i should show you the gift that they sent us in the mail you got a gift basket yeah, I got got a little like gift with like you know some alcohol and and some glasses and a whole bunch of nice little goodies. So, um, but but I see them no, eyes. No. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, um, 
I think it's great to see, you know, a lot of these shows that got picked up like Atlanta and a whole bunch of other ones, but we also, um, you know, we, we're also sad to see some of these shows go. Um, yeah. A couple of comments before we move on. Do you want to read those? Sure, Jasmine. Hey, girl. She says, yes, I watch Bronish and Sisters. Nice. Yeah. We've got Rihanna. How you doing? Welcome to the show. She says, hello from London CT Monogamy. She's giving you a <laughs> shout out over there. Yeah, we love that. And um, New London, I said London, New London, Connecticut. Yeah. Hey, um, and Tyel, Ty am I saying that right? Uh, Tyel, uh, Onyx Channel is coming through Hulu also. That's exciting to know as yeah. well. And if I'm not, shows. yeah. That's what's up. Um, Welcome to the show to you too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Rihanna, she does a lot of stuff. Um, she does a lot of, I used to, um, well, I gosh, I've known her since high school. Uh, she worked at a school that I, that I was attending to in high school. And so she does a lot of stuff with the youth, which is amazing. And, um, and so, yeah, big shout out to, to her tool. Tool. Okay. We got yes. You. Thank you for breaking that down. I love it. Where Where's that from, Tool? Yeah. Put that in the chat so we can see. Well, we want to get to our guest um, as we wait for him to tell us where he's from, all that good stuff. So our guest this week is a nutritionist and founder of the Black Girls Eat Movement, which is set out to make a positive impact on the health and wellness of undeserved communities. Noni Robinson is a graduate of Lincoln University and has a doctor a doctorate in nutritional science from Howard University. In 2018, she founded Black Girls Eat to ensure that the scope of her work encompasses social justice as it relates to nutrition, health, and wellness. Please welcome Noni Robinson. Hi, welcome. You're oh, on mute, Malene. And and that was Martika. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Melanie. Hey, thank you for having me. Yay. Thank well, you for being here. How's my lighting? My Say lighting good? How's my lighting? Turn to the yeah. left real quick. Right, look, look. All right, turn right. You good? Good. Thank you. Yeah, you good. <laughs> you can what tell up, they, Right. Yeah, you should. You could already tell they friend. Uh, <laughs> so we want to just just bring you on to just talk about the obesity that's happening with our with our young kids, and you know how can we get this resolved? And how did you start your whole entire organization? So we got a wealth of questions. We're going to throw you away. Um, yeah. So how did you just you know how did you decide to get into this portion of um, nutrition for young kids? Sure. So I have um, tons of years of experience in nutrition, but I found out what satiated me most was community nutrition, particularly working with black and brown communities because we are underserved in terms of uh, medical, um, <clears throat> I guess, uh, receiving treatment. We are underserved in terms of having um, great resources. So I said, what can I do to help the community and inspire and educate? So I came up with this platform called Black Girls Eat, which is an online platform to inspire, educate um, for black women and girls, brown women and girls to have a safe relationship, sorry, a safe conversation regarding our relationships with food. Mm -hmm. All of the health um, issues, health disparities that black women are facing it usually starts with what we're putting on our forks. So my hashtag is we are healthy AF, which stands for we are healthy as our forks. Um, so I thought it would be a, a place where women felt inspired. Um, black women are killing the game in all areas of our lives. We are great partners, we are great sisters, we are great community leaders, doctors, we're in the White House, but why are we still making these decisions that ultimately don't fuel us, um, that aren't saving our lives. Um, so it's not so much anymore about if you have access or education, 
if there are women that are highly educated that can that have access to foods, healthy foods, grocery stores that are still struggling with obesity and being overweight, diabetes, high blood pressure. We all know someone, whether it's ourselves, friends, family at work, that's taking some sort of medication that is nutrition related. So I said, what is it? Women aren't feeling safe to have these conversations. A lot of times our primary care doctors are not having conversations about nutrition and we are not checking one another regarding nutrition. When we celebrate, it's around food and drinks. When we mourn, it's around food and drinks. So how do we change that? Um, so hence Black Girls Eat. So I got a question for you. So uh, I've, I've read in multiple uh, periodicals about emotional eating. And you just spoke about uh, women's or people's relationship to food. So can yeah. you tell me the connection between people emotionally eating and food? Like how, what's what's the connection? And can you explain to our audience what that is? So, so mindful eating is being intentional about our process of eating. So it starts with being intentional with your food list, being intentional with your shopping, being intentional with your preparation of the food and, and cooking. So a lot of us, especially there's something called the quarantine 15, where people have gained weight during COVID, right? So people have, were lonely, people were scared about living, people were afraid to go outside. So how did we cope? We watched television movies, we ate, we drank, we Zoom called, we FaceTimed. So um, mindful eating is a technique I learned um, when I did research at Johns Hopkins um, to how to help people to lose weight. Um, it's not a quick diet. It's all about processing. Am I, am I hungry? How hungry am I? Am I full? How full am I? Um, so that's what mindful eating is, is processing and being intentional about your choices around food, how much you eat, what you purchase, your planning. Um, so that's what mindful eating is. And we found that that has been successful with people with weight loss and has helped eradicate disease in terms of nutrition. Go ahead, Janora. Yeah, Noni, I think you were calling me out, sister, when you were talking about women who are educated but still choose to maybe put the wrong thing on the AF, <laughs> on the other end of the fork. So with your work, what are some of the solutions that you all are investigating and implementing to help a woman like me choose, who knows better actually do better? and choose better. better better so it's all about planning um janora so also i was in a situation where i felt a little stressed um three years ago i was a daily coca-cola drinker two three times a day it had to be a can it had to be cold it had to be at this time this time and this time um so i said this is no longer serving me the sugar um the amount of calories um how it felt um so I, I slowly but surely, I went down to two cans, I went down to one can, and then I just, I just cut it out. About last week, I was stressed out, and I hadn't done that in years. I was stressed out, and I had a small can of Coke. Um, so I didn't beat myself up. But when I was trying to leave that habit alone, I was intentional every day and speaking to myself, right? So people are intentional with showing up for work properly. People are intentional getting their nails done, their hair done. So I think putting that on the forefront of your life, being mindful about your food choices, that's when the change begins. So um, I have a, for instance, I, I think part of our issue is that we um, don't know. We don't know what we should be eating. And I had, I have a, a friend of mine that had um, had like a mild heart attack and of course, this person was, um, I'm going to make the changes. I'm going to make the changes. But immediately went right back to the old habits of eating the same thing over and over because they don't know what they should be eating, how to make the change, what, you know, how do I do the research? And a lot of times we get caught back up in life that we don't do the research that we need to do. How do we make that change? 
So we have to reach out, we have to hold our primary care doctors accountable also with our treatment, with our preventative care and moving forward, making good, good decisions. Um, no longer of the days of the flu pyramid. Um, we have to be more creative. We have to be intentional about our health. A lot of times people that aren't overweight or obese, they don't take nutrition seriously. You know, some people say I'm fine, right? But people that aren't overweight or obese have, have diabetes, high blood pressure, they have heart attacks as well. But you have to be ready to make that change. And food is also an addiction for people, right? So when people have a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction, a sex addiction, 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 I can't say the word, a sex addiction, it's the same thing with food. So when people are ready to make that change, um, just like financial wellness, you have to be intentional with your finances, right? You have to be intentional with showing up for yourself and eating healthy is most definitely a form of self-care. Hmm. So uh, one thing that we didn't mention was that you actually worked uh, with Michelle Obama for her, in her program, the program that she was having for children. So in working with this program and, and in all your years of research, what did, you, what did you find out about black children specifically that they were gaining more weight than any other group of kids minus Native American? And like, why are they such a high risk? Because some of the stuff that I've read says because of uh, uh, exercise and not being able to sports and said food deserts because there's McDonald's and Burger King and stuff. But what in your research did you come to the conclusion why yeah, our so, kids are? So the Healthy Free, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, which was passed by Obama in 2010, um, that's when they changed the food patterns for the National School Lunch and Breakfast Program, where they <clears throat> decreased the amount of sodium and sugar in school meals. Um, in addition to increasing physical activity, increasing grains in meals, that's what the Obamas brought to uh, nutrition and wellness um, for America. And I found that children needed more education around health and wellness, particularly in urban communities. If that is put more into the school system, as opposed to standardized test scores and learning for the test, they can't learn if they're not healthy. Right. So children spend more hours like we do spend more hours um, at work or they spend more hours at school than they do at home. So they have to be in an environment that celebrates health and wellness, increasing that physical activity time. Right. Increasing that time related to nutrition. A lot of children don't know that there is something called a fresh pineapple. I learned that with working with the Let's Move program and the National School Lunch program. There are things they don't know about fresh fruits and vegetables. They don't know. They just know what's at the corner store, what mom is preparing. Um, so increasing education is important because once you start young, people will make healthier decisions as adults, right? So we have help children that are overweight or obese tend to become overweight or obese adults. So we have to start when they're younger and it's important to teach. You can teach a child anything. So we must incorporate that. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, this is definitely an important conversation. And of course the conversation only gets better when we have the audience chime in. So just want to take this time to quickly recognize everybody who is in the house. So um, can he say she's late? Girl, you're never late. Just being here is enough. So greetings from uh, to you in the Bahamas. And if there's anything different that you experience there in a different country, um, shout us out, put it in the comments. We got Tangerine in the house. She says, hey, BPS fam, hey Noni. Tangerine hey. definitely knows all about health and what you put in your body and pays attention to that. So we're excited to have you too, Tangerine. She says, great topic. Yep. I love discuss discussing health and fitness for our people. Uh, the fact that Coca-Cola started out actually having cocaine inside it and still is a successful company <laughs> baffles me. Somebody got some money on that end, pulling some strings. Oh yes, eating healthy is a form of self-care. I I logged that up here and in here too when you drop that, uh, Noni, that's very powerful. And last but not least, uh, I oh, think, well, you I can get into it, did I? Oh, tool, tool, you can uh, just, just so that we can acknowledge. Oh, 
Yeah. Yes. Louisiana roots, baby. Nice yeah. tool. Nice. That oh, is wow. great. It's such, yeah. I, I, I love the name and I love uh, exactly where you're from, especially all the food. <laughs> <laughs> So, Noni, my question to you is, you talked about usually overweight kids become overweight adults. I um, sometimes struggle myself and know people who struggle who are just like, look, this is how I've always been. Right, right, right. This looks like how it's just how I'm going to ride this out. And I, I, I say that also personally. Um, you, you talked earlier about gaining the quarantine 15 girl. No, it was the COVID-19 and I know exactly where those pounds go. And right. sometimes I'm in a, a, a space where I'm seeing results and things are happening, but sometimes I'm in a space where it's like, this is just must be what it is. You don't feel motivated. Yeah. yeah. So what right. kind of advice would you give that person in that space that just doesn't see hope of any kind of change happening? Sure. So I want to address the first thing you said. You know how people say diabetes runs in my family, high blood mm -hmm. pressure runs in my family, right? So I would say that habits run in families, right? Good habits and not so good habits, right? So we learn things about finances from our family. We learn about communication from our family. We learn about eating from our family. So we need to break those, what do they call them? Generational curses and start some new ones. And that's related to nutrition and wellness. So we can't blame that on our mama and daddies, right? We're grown now. We get to make those decisions. So people that are feeling a little less motivated, I think it's like that with everything in life. You just get right back on the horse. You don't beat yourself up. I took that um, can of Coke about a week ago. I drank that can of Coke and I felt really bad about it. And it didn't taste the same. It didn't taste the same as it usually did. So I think... Also, making eating and health and wellness fun. Usually people buy the same groceries. They cook the same meals. So I, I always advise people try buy some new things at the grocery store. Try new recipes, right? Everything's on the web now. Um, so being intentional um, is the way to go. I think sometimes, oh, I was just going to, uh, I, I think sometimes it's, it's not, it's just not easy when it's, when it's not a part of, like, there's certain things that I can do very well, you know, the whole acting thing and putting stuff together, whatever. But when it comes to the food thing, I can't do that on my own. I literally will sit there and just be like, uh, which is so weird because my whole family cooks, but everybody, majority of people are, are, are overweight, <laughs> you know, that home right. school. But um, but I didn't I didn't grow up. I wasn't allowed to be in the kitchen. So um, so good and bad. I didn't really, you know, I can cook, but I don't know how to cook all that other stuff. Right. Yeah. But again, I go back to the same thing, which is. You know, how do we figure out what to eat that's really going to help us? Because one minute it's. Oh, you know, eating broccoli. Oh, but now you're cooking it too long and it's not, it doesn't do right. anything for you. Um, right. Like, but I'm eating broccoli and you're saying right, that it's, right. not, it's not nutritionist. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and so right. it's really, you know, trying to understand what it is that we need to be doing and making right. it a program. So it's not as right. simple as everybody says. Right. We gotta so if it, Mm -hmm. If you're a person that struggles with recipes, um, what to buy the store, um, what's healthy to cook, um, what's good for your body type, what's good for your blood type, with your what your health markers are, that's when you reach out to a nutritionist. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, so I happen to enjoy grocery shopping. I happen to enjoy cooking. It's a drag for some people, right? I it's it's therapeutic for me. So that's when you reach out for help, when it becomes um, a barrier for successful living in terms of taking care of yourself. We do that if we were told we have low vitamin D, if our hair was falling out, if we broke our ankle, we need to do that more with the foods we're putting in our body. We only get one heart, we only get one body, so we have to do the best thing for it. So I got a two part question. Sure. Uh, the first part of the question, let me get the question out, then you can answer it any way you want to get out. 
But the first part of the question has to do with the food pyramid. I remember reading a while ago that the food pyramid wasn't had nothing to do with nutrition. It was just a bunch of lobbyists saying what food was the best. And now there's multiple types of food pyramids. So what food pyramid would you, you would you suggest black people use or in the order of, of I, I, best I, I, to work? Hold up, let me finish. And the second part is nowadays you have a lot of people going on paleo diet, they're doing intermittent right. fasting, they're doing so in that in that regard, what would you suggest for people, black people with regards to how they should sure. Sure. Well, uh, in terms of diets, I'm not a proponent of diets. I'm a proponent for mindful eating and slow mm -hmm. and steady wins the race and good habits. Because when you when you do that yo-yo dieting, if you don't continue for the rest of your life, you're going to go be right back in the same space. You might lose that weight for that wedding dress, for that prom, for that trip on the beach. But if you can if you don't continue, it's going to come back on. So what about slow stuff and but what about stuff like intermittent fasting when you can eat? It doesn't matter the food, but the time period matters. Is that a, is that a, would you suggest that with regards to black people? I, I would need to see. So I, I think that people do not think of nutrition as a science. I think mm -hmm. that people don't take taking supplements seriously. If the bad combination of supplements, you can get sick. I think that a nutritionist needs to be consulted before people make these decisions. Mm -hmm. I think people are reading things on the internet and they think it one size fits all and it's and nutrition is a science. So mm -hmm. once that is um, educated to the community, I think people will take it more seriously and then we will have more healthier outcomes. In terms of the food pyramid, I think it also depends on if you're a man, woman, right? You're saying just for black people in general, what are the things they should eat? I think mm -hmm. we should shop at the perimeter of the grocery store not so much in the inside. The outside is where the healthy stuff is. Water all day, green stuff all day, fruits and veggies, less sugar and processed foods. Things that you don't understand what the words mean on the back, stay away from it. Okay. There you go. I know we have some questions and stuff in here. I'll let Janora, uh, you know, do what she does, so. All right. Um, oh, you are preaching over there. No, my goal is to, to, to really listen to what you say and do it. Um, but that, that is awesome. Okay, so we have got uh, Kathy in the house. How you doing, Kathy? She says, she starts off, so why do the healthiest foods tend to sometimes be more expensive? It feels as though something we, uh, she uh, continues right here. Uh, something else, thank you, uh, Christy, something else behind the scenes is playing a bigger part in our black and brown lives. Would you definitely. agree? I definitely do, but I, in terms of financial assistance and being on the WIC programs, there are farmer's market access for people. The WIC program gives moms farmer's market coupons. And I used to work for the WIC program and you would be surprised the amount of coupons that would come back to the office. People wouldn't utilize them. So farmers are taking um, food stamps, and sometimes people don't know that. So most towns now have um, farmers markets. So checking out what your city has, what your county has, um, and using your money that way, it goes longer as opposed to a grocery store. What, All right. What, what would you say when uh, when black people? Because I speak about you know me. I speak to a lot of black people. They say that uh, healthy food tastes nasty. And you, you also cook, so because taste comes from either fat or sugar. Everything else is sort of so. Right. How, what would you tell people to make their food taste better, or do they just have to change their palate to make? You have, you have to change your palate because there's so many adult picky eaters. It's just not the babies anymore. And I think with myself and others, you have to give it a try, or there are other substitutes. Try each month to try something different from the grocery store. You'd be surprised the things that we like and we can find. When it comes to kids, though, when, when I was growing up, my mother cooked, my father cooked, and you ate what was served. Like it was there. Or you couldn't there. get up from now, the table. I couldn't get up, couldn't up from get the, the table. table. Yeah, Nowadays, yeah. it seems like they're asking the kids what they want for dinner as opposed right. to telling them this is what you're having for dinner. How well, that's a whole nother parenting. That's not nutrition. That's parenting, isn't it? That's, that's parenting. But how, how yeah. you suggest 
to get fruits and vegetables into these kids sure. lives sure so so that's part of the shopping experience i know when my daughter was younger i would take her to this grocery store with me but it couldn't be around nap time or it couldn't be when i was frustrated in the evenings after work so it was always around planning and having conversations with her and including her and sometimes you don't feel like being bothered when it's late you just want to eat and get them in bed but having her in the kitchen and having her as part of that conversation her palate is strong and varied and her nutrition knowledge is because of that i started when she was younger so i think that will help I th and i think it's true and we'll get we'll get to the next question for uh from tool but um you know i think it's it's interesting that um I have a relative that lived with um, his mother and all he ate was fruits and vegetables. He didn't like all of that crazy stuff. You know what I mean? The, the candy and all that. Then when he started visiting the other parent, now all of a sudden it's, you know, because she would never let him have anything at all. I think now it's just becoming this whole like, <gasps> Um, and, and I think because he was raised on the, the good stuff, that's what he loved. But now I don't know. You know what I mean? Now I don't know. Right. So, but I, I think it is true. Um, Janora, did you have a question before we get to the next question? Um, well, just to, to, to piggyback off what you were saying, um, Christy, mm -hmm. I've seen the, the studies with babies and you, you put a carrot in front of a baby and you put an Oreo in mm -hmm. front of the baby and the baby goes for the carrot because the baby doesn't know what an Oreo is. It is the natural stuff. It, it is, right. I think when we do introduce the youth and the kids and the babies to these unhealthy things that have these, uh, like you talked about earlier, these connections of addiction that are thrown into the food, that's when it changes our natural palate. But naturally, yeah, Christy, uh, we do, I think naturally as our bodies do gravitate to what's real instead of what's but do you real. Do you all find in your conversations with your contemporaries that people are speaking about nutrition and wellness or more so, I feel like people talk more about exercise. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they exactly. go in, tan they're in tandem. So why do you think that part is left out? I hmm. always because we don't want to make the change. I don't know if it's the want to make the change or you, we just didn't, we didn't, we didn't grow up in a space. When you think about when you think about groceries, you you think about budgeting and finances. It's like there's a connection between food and finance that we really don't talk about in the black community because the stuff that we need to buy in order for us to eat healthy comes with a cost. Like Kathy was asking earlier. So we tend not to talk about food because when you go down that road, most of us are just buying what we can eat. We're not buying food to survive. We're just buying what's in front of us. If it's a ramen noodle and some rice and some eggs and, you know, people, you know, and I know, like you said, a lot of people don't know that there are these vouchers that people can get for farmers market and things of that nature. So maybe we do need to talk about more about, but there's a connection between food and money. And that's sort of a sticky situation when it comes to black people, because we tend not to talk about how we don't have money publicly. So do you, to you one think another. black people think that nutrition is important or you think we're coming around? I, I think we think that it's important, but what our understanding of what's important is different. So you, uh, like black, the black people that I've spoke to, who don't know much about food will say, oh yeah, we need to eat like we used to eat, like Big Mom and them used to feed us, even though they don't know that Big Mom and them, some of the stuff that they fed us was bad too, because they're basing it off of McDonald's, Dorito, and, and uh, high C diet, as opposed to something being cooked in a pot for long hours of time. They think that's healthier, but they don't know that the ingredients is what makes it healthier. So it's a, it's a process, it's just getting there, but it's not. I tell you that much because everybody living into their 80s and all that. And then you see people in our generation who are dying in their 40s and 50s. And, you know what I mean? 60s. So, yeah. I mean, but don't get me wrong, they all had high blood pressure and all that kind of stuff, but they still live to be 70, 80, almost 90. Go ahead. Jamie. Well, I, I, I think what the difference is, is what they put in the food. Like, you, you mm -hmm. might have ate a pig back in the day, but the pig you raised or the pig, you know, you got down the street from the butcher versus the right. pig here or the cow here or the chicken here that is full of all these hormones. So right. I think that's the biggest difference. It's not necessarily what, it's what they've done to our food what in they've this done contemporary to our food. age. 
Janorn, if you think about it, I'm 49 years old. So if I think about the 80s, how much more food is in the grocery store now than when I was a little girl? It's mm-hmm. tons of snacks, tons of different types of chickens, different sizes. It's just real crazy. And it's more of what's not good. Yeah. It's yeah. more. It's more. Uh, Junior, did you want to say anything before we get to this question real quick? No, I definitely want to uh, spend some time with the folks that are in the house as well that we just can't see in on the screen, uh, but we feel the love through it. And Tool has a question. He says, in your research, have you found that red dye in the chips has called excitability in kids, especially five to 15 minutes after ingestion? Wow, I I haven't found that, but I have found that allergies and food have caused children certain children to have ADD so some children after they have had an allergy test they have found that they're allergic to this or that and that's how their attention deficit came to be so I haven't done research particularly on red dye it is interesting when I went to Europe we'll get to the next one um Steve said something to Janora but um it's interesting how in Europe they got rid of all of those dyes, the red dye, the, uh, I think it was uh, the green, any, the orange, the yellow, because they were saying that they're all um, can cause cancer and they don't use those dyes in Europe. And it was interesting to eat the foods in Europe. Even the strawberries tasted way different. I had to get used to it because I was there right. for a couple of weeks. I had to get used to eating that food versus what we have here because they don't have all that processed stuff in their, in their candy or in their regular foods. Um, Steve said to Janora, Janora, didn't you get married on a beach? You can eat what you want. Just go swimming. Laugh out loud. <laughs> and then Steve, Cass- I- oh. go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to answer Steve's question. Yes, I did get married on the beach. But Steve, we are talking nutrition going along with movement. So yes, I can swim, but I also need to make sure that my fork is healthy AF. Yes. You want to read this one? <laughs> so Kathy, oh, this this was a part of the original conversation. Um, yeah. And Kathy says, for those that need financial assistance with food purchases, their money has to last and the healthier foods are more costly. Their food stamps, for example, has to last an entire month for some families. So yeah, that is a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. Steve had another good one about rice, which is a really good question. Mm-hmm. Steve um, says, I love, I, rice. Go ahead. I love rice, but I learned that it is really bad. You, I heard the same thing, Steve. What is a good substitute for rice or, I'll, or and, can you just clarify or demystify this whole rice conversation, Noni? Well, I, I, I think in terms of rice, it's, it's individual. It's not for everyone. What type of rice are you eating? Is it a grain? Is it white rice? How are you digesting it? Are you digesting it? So I think it's, it's individual um, and how much you're, you're eating. So if your body's telling you it's not good, we need to listen to that as well. Right. I thought so, you were talking specifically about like the arsenic because there was like a study yeah, done recently that there's a lot of arsenic mm-hmm. in rice, especially brown rice, because it, it gets absorbed in the husk. And so husk, you're, better, yes. you're yeah. better off eating white rice, but white rice has less nutrition than white brown rice. rice. Or, or organic rice because the process is different. So it's all about the processing. So a lot happens to foods before it gets to our grocery store and before it comes to our kitchen. And I don't think we're thinking about that either. What happens from the farm? What happens from the chicken plant to the truck? to the plane, to the grocery store, to the processing, to us. So there's a lot that happens which um, our bodies react to. So rice is one of them, but in terms of substitutes, couscous is good. Any other type of grain? I don't know if you guys are quinoa. familiar with quinoa is good. Um, so those things are good and they, they they do fill you up and they are healthier. Um, but I, got, uh, I no, keep going. Keep going. I got two okay. quick questions after you're done. Okay, so I hope that answers just your question, Steve. But you know, we uh, I'm like, wow, and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, I do now, I eat it now, but you know, for black folks, now. now let me go on yeah, and get we, that. We weren't exposed to that till we got jobs and stuff. I don't know where it when it came, <laughs> but I didn't have it as a little girl. I did. Not yeah. as a little girl. So two quick questions. Uh one, can you talk about organic foods? 
because there, I read something about a food can be grown organically, but when it's shipped, it doesn't have to be shipped organically. It can have preservatives in the shipping. That's one thing. And the second part is, can you explain to people how addictive sugar is? Because I've read this whole book about how sugar is more addictive than cocaine. Right. And and it someone, I think someone someone said referenced that earlier. One of the um, one of the listeners she put she compared that to Coca Cola. Something she said. Then then one of the listeners. Oh, said no, that she, said that. she said that. Mm -hmm. She was surprised that Coca Cola used to have cocaine in it. That's yeah, sh sh sugar is um, very much addictive. Um, it causes so many different reactions in our body. Not only that, the weight gain causes inflammation in our bodies. Um, it can cause um, it can cause depression because you're up and then you're down. Um, it can uh, change the temperatures of our body. Um, it changes um, the nutritional value of foods. I know my grandmother put sugar in everything: spaghetti, um, cabbage. I mean, her, her coffee was white by the time she drank it. It was greens. Like sugar. Yes, greens. Everything needed sugar. So everything everything that's how we, that's how we grew up and so when you are young like that and that's how you eat that's what you're accustomed to you have to make that intentional change but sugar um is definitely a silent killer we have diabetes right we have obesity we have all of those things not not to mention how it affects us mentally so sugar is something that we should always have in moderation just like salt people give salt a bad rap but sugar they are brother and sister, sister and sister. Wow. Brother in terms and brother. of brother and brother, and right in terms of organic foods, it's how the food um, is processed. That's part of it, but how it's grown as well. So we don't know, like if if a food, uh, a corn, corn is organic if it is transported. In oh no! I wanted to Dang hear it. this. Oh, no. Yeah, because you oh. hear the same bad corn gets a bad rap just like rice does. She's back. Like, what's the truth? Right, right. She's back. right. Okay, what please happened? tell this because I'm on this whole organic kick. I've been on the kick for about four years. So is it really probably longer, actually? Probably like two years. But I just want to know. Yeah. So please when you please. read when you read the food labels, sometimes it doesn't say a hundred percent organic. Right. Some 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 are partially organic. It's not fully organic. So you have to know how to read. Food labels are important in terms of health and wellness as well. They shouldn't be difficult to read. So if something is 100 percent organic and is stamped by the USDA, which some people don't trust, that's when it's supposed to be organic. But you know what? what? About corn. Oh, wait, hold on one second. We should do a program where you are teaching us how to read the back of let's the do it let's because do it. that's something that i'm like it can be intimidating right yeah right, right, right. Right, right, i'm right, sorry right, right, right. uh abdul had some uh question about corn no no i wanted you to finish your thought you were saying something about corn and then you got cut off so i wanted to know what was the rest of that corn had what in it I was talking about if a, if corn was organic, what the process should be like. And Kathy said that humans don't digest corn. Um, some people say that with corn and some people say that with, with nuts, that it's difficult for people to digest. And you're smiling, Abdul, why? The word nuts makes me laugh. God. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. Okay, what you time is it? it? <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, Abdul is 12 years old. You're the smartest 12 year old yes. I know, Abdul. <laughs> and uh, Kathy uh, came with an awesome suggestion here in the comments. She says, I believe our primary care physicians should have everyone attend a nutrition class, just like when we have uh, annual physicals. Education is knowledge. We eat better Absolutely. when we know better. Uh, also, in terms of the sugar conversation, Kathy says some say they add sugar to sometimes combat the acidity in foods. At least that's what I've heard. Yeah. Right. So yeah. when you guys go to your primary care physician, do they give you information regarding nutrition? No, never. Ever. Go ahead. Well, mine would be if, if 
when I get my blood work done, if something is high, I would get a nutritional link to something within the website. Just a link, but no, yeah. no follow up with you. How are you doing? Because no. my my no. um my blood pressure was a little high. I mean, it won't like you know. I need to be on medication, but it right. was typical. I still eat the swan and love it. Uh, blood pressure level. <laughs> so we, but, we, need pull, we need to pull them to the carpet regarding these things. Cause that's all part of your wellness. Yeah. And, and yeah. maybe the reason I let it slide is cause I knew I still like bacon and was going to eat it. So maybe it was right. just a, a intentional denial <laughs> of right. something she right. might've suggested to change, but I knew I might've not been in a mental right. space to do so. Right. I think that we need to start taking it more seriously and then challenging the people that we love to take it more seriously. Right. So we yeah. we challenge people that um, are in toxic relationships. Right. We say, girl, you know, right. Yeah. People to live their dreams. How are we going to do all of these healthy things if we are feeding ourselves trash? And I also I just think it also comes down to, you know, the lives, you know, rich people can have somebody cook their food or deliver their food or have their food services and all that kind of stuff. You're dealing with people who are working, you know, not a nine to five, but, you know, a nine to 10 and then coming home and having something else that they got to do. And then it's like, I'm going to get the first thing that I can get, which is something quick so I can handle this other business that I got to do and they keep it moving. It becomes the cycle. And so the question is, is how do we, um, how do we change that cycle or, or having the time to really cook or the desire to cook, you know, because we're so busy. We're so busy. And I know that it's something that we have to make a priority, but I think sometimes it just comes down to the, I have no clue. And I'm, I'm actually speaking from experience because really at the end of the day, I mean, I have, you know, I do a meal prep. I have somebody delivers food. They're going to be here in about 20 minutes. They okay. deliver the food. But I had to do that because I was buying food at home, not eating it because I'm auditioning all day, get home late or right before I get home, I can't survive. I need to grab something quick. And I was just grabbing something from a fast food place or whatever. This was years and years and years ago, but you know, it becomes the cycle. I just think we're saying all of this stuff, but if there is no actual plan, like a list to give somebody and say, this is what you should be doing or can be doing. I think we're still going to be in the same place of everybody. Same just place. Talking. So, so, so more education, right? Not just talking yeah. about high blood pressure and diabetes, right. talking about food labels, how to be mindful. So it sounds like Christy, you decided to make a change. So I'm not going to do it because I don't have time. I don't like it, but I'm going to make this choice and I can pay for it. So that was your mindful way of taking control mm -hmm. and you're, right. and you but exercise I have, and I have the resources, Right. But you I have, have the resources, resources right? To do it. Right. You know, but everybody else doesn't have it. You know, right. or like I look at my mom and I'm like, come on, mom, you got to stop eating this BS. You got it, you know, but she just, it's just the mindset. She's like, just the mindset, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, like I think people like us with anything, if I start next week, if I start next month, then it becomes six months. Or if I start January 1st, I start January 31st. And then it just becomes a cycle, like Christy said. So it's really something that has to be an eight and that is important to you. So I think people think t having high blood pressure is no big deal. We'll just pop this pill and we'll just eat whatever we want. I have friends that do that. Mm -hmm. And that's hard so, to see. No, so, so what would you suggest people read or look up or investigate to combat some of these food problems you're talking about. And also tell us about what you got going on with regards to your children's uh, projects that you have or your nutritional projects you have going on. Sure, sure. There's a nutritional healing book. Um, it's a health and wellness book. It's called Nutritional Healing. I always recommend that because it gives the ins and outs of vitamins, minerals, what our body needs, how do we get it, what to buy, if your hair is falling out, if you're having um, some anxiety, all of those things. It lets um, the community know that food affects all things in us. 
And I think that's what the community doesn't know. Right. We are just thinking of food as satiating us for these hours. And then in a few hours, it's time to eat in a few. But what is it doing seven days from now with what we ate that Sunday, right? And what does that food that we ate on Sunday, what does that do six months from now? I don't think we look at it as a cycle, right? Everything, it starts with what we put on our forks. Um, in terms of what I'm working on now, I am working on an animation um, for a character that's based off of me when I was 10 years old. Her name is Noni Malene, and she has superpowers to change the world, to teach kids mm -hmm. eight to 12 years old um, about health and wellness, positive body image, positive, positive self-esteem, um, exercise, nutrition, reading food labels, bullying. So just having a well-rounded, confident child leads for success. And um, I'm excited about it. Um, it should be out in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to have a virtual online platform where I just cast a little girl. Her name is Ilet Pence, Spence. And she's going to interview kids about different topics. And we'll have adult professionals who will be the superhero of that particular discipline and teach children about health and wellness. And I hope that with us teaching the young children, the next generation will be healthier because we're not doing well. Beautiful, that's wonderful. Yeah, I love that, Noni. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I would love to come back to teach you guys about food labels. And where can they reach you? If, they want, if anybody wants to reach out to you for your for your services sure. or you know, for your website. My website for... is uh, We Are Healthy AF. Um, and my social media platforms are Black Girls Eat. Um, there you go, my Instagram, We Are Healthy AF. And that's also my website. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I would love to see, um, and I don't know if you know about like the budget Nista. I don't know if you've ever seen her. Love her. Yes. I'm and what I love about her is, uh, you know, she gives out those free seminars and then after that, you got to pay for them. Like she just offers yeah. them. I love that. Um, and I'm definitely not uh, saying that you should do anything for free. But um, but I think about her and how she gives and how she makes so much money because she gives. But I would love to see even for myself, who mostly eats uh, fruits and vegetables all the time. But understanding nutrition a little bit more. And I think it's just because I don't make it a priority. I don't have the time. So I would love to understand labels, why I should eat organic. How do we know if it's really organic? Should I be eating that chicken? You know what I mean? Or does it, or is it all bad? You know what I mean? Or, um, but yeah, I think nutrition is important and basing it off of like people who might have diabetes versus heart attacks versus, you know, strokes versus, whatever the case may be. But I, th I think what you're doing is wonderful. And I, I, I'm Thank looking so forward much. to it. Yeah, I, I actually got a question for the three of you. So y'all know my mom ain't black. So growing up in my household, because of her heritage and where she came from, what you fed your family was really important in terms yep. of the type of food that, what the cuts of meat, she went to a butcher, she didn't go to this, she went to the limits. So when it comes to black, people, specifically black women, is there something there that's going on? Because I hear a lot of black women our age talk about, I don't know, how, they, don't, like, they don't even know how to cook. I, I think I think we're chasing the bag in our dreams and um, that's what's getting lost. I think that's what's I happening. I agree. And I do know how to cook, just so you guys know, I do know how to cook. <laughs> yeah. It's just we're, that we're, I... I focus on the acting and everything else I got going on. I do on my, you know, on the food stuff. I just, I'm like, ugh, all of that. It just drives do you me think nuts. It, do you think it's chasing the bad? Because like this other train of thought is my family's nutrition is. Abdul, that takes time. But that takes a lot of time. Like our well, I'm not accusing anything. I'm, just, I'm literally just No, no I'm saying it, it takes time and effort. So it depends on what's important to you. 
Got it. So it's like as women, we got to do both. And you got to take care of your mental health. You got to cook. You got to clean. You got to do it. all mm. these things. So we're like right. later for the food right now. We're going to have somebody deliver it. We got to do these auditions. I got to do these podcasts. I got to do this animation. That'll come later. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead. Janelle. I'll let you answer because I, I, I want to piggyback well, on that. I, I apologize. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the question the actual question was the, the question was is it cultural is it, is it is it cultural the fact that this this new age idea that like people don't even know want to even learn how to cook like this idea but in different cultures they look at food differently like the asian culture the hispanic culture the way they approach food is like i think black people do I, too i think <laughs> black people too. i mean i look at all my aunts and and everybody from ohio and stuff like that like they, so, so is it just a new age thing? Is just a generation new age? X, maybe generation, generation X. Yeah. yeah, because my mother, you know, I think it also comes from maybe the broken home thing. I'm sorry, you know, I ended up jumping back in. My, my apologies, but I think it's, um, I think it's, uh, you know, they had a two parent home, and all of my aunts, even if they did work, they still made sure that the food is on the table by the time everybody got home. By the time my mom, um, which those were her sisters, my mom is way younger than that. Like they're they're way older than my mom, her sisters. And she was more of being in a single, she was single, she was working, she was trying to go to school, she's raising two kids and we had to fend for ourselves. And I think mm. there's a part of that whole thing where it got missed where I wasn't taught how to do all of these things. My mother was about, go after your dream. You know what I mean? And that's what I watched my mom do as opposed to my other family who, you know, they, they weren't out all the time working all the time. They would after work, they come home, food was ready by six o'clock, everybody ate, blah, blah, blah. I think, I think it's that more than. I, but I was reading like uh, years ago, might've been 20 years ago. It might've been when I was in high school. I read this book, Shahrazad's book, the black man's God and sending the black woman. Yeah. And in, yeah. but no, but yeah, but in that yes. book, she talks about nutrition and now yeah. the importance yeah. of how our community forsakes nutrition. She was talking specifically to black women, but I'm just saying our communities complete together, but they forsake nutrition for all these other ancillary reasons, you know, like you said, chasing the bag or, or what have you. And I just wanted to know if that's just, it's like that a real thing or is it just. I, I think every I don't situation is different. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, Noni. You can't, I don't think one generalization is going to sum up a whole culture and how they eat and how they celebrate food. Because uh, my upbringing, I, all last at the end of um episode where we gave our moms the This Week and BPS Person of the Week, I talked about I came from a cooking family and my mama mm -hmm. can throw down. And that's still nothing compared to how her sister can throw down. And we grew up with a grandma that was every Sunday uh, dinner at her house. And what was even better about that is they grew up on the farm. So I saw the cow. We still eat chitlins, but shoot, that was the pig that was in the pig pen last you know month. Mm -hmm. or, or I remember breaking pole beans with my mom, my grandmama on the porch. They grew everything they ate and we ate good. And mm -hmm. me not knowing how to cook so much is one product of being the, the fourth child. So I didn't have to take care of nobody. I think I feel like I was spoiled. My mama was a housewife for quite some time. So yes, the, 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 the key was to have the meal on the table. And because there were four kids, we weren't going out to eat. And my mama was a home economics teacher. So we did grow up with this whole food pyramid, nutrition, and there was always something green. And again, that's also because we grew up with a, a fresh garden. So food is, is just definitely rooted into my family. And, uh, but I know that my experience is different than your experience, Christy, and maybe your experience, Noni. So that, that's a tough one size fits all. And, and again, it, it was like yours. It's just uh, the, the difference was that it was my grandparents and my, my aunts and all that kind of stuff. My mother just had a completely different, um, you know, outlook. She was about go after your dreams. You know what I mean? So and I appreciated that as opposed to my dad, who was like, yeah, you're not going to catch a man because you don't you're not in that cooking. You know, and I was like, oh, my God, Dad, I can't believe you said that to me. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So. And, and I'll definitely acknowledge that I think for our parents' generation and, and their parents' generation, it was more out of necessity versus now we do have resources to uh, 
uh, oh, wow. have a chef or, 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 or do whatever. And because we do have the resources or, or there's a good portion of our population that does, I feel like that goes back to our original conversation with you, Noni, where, okay, we can't use the excuse of, I, I got all these jobs, I can't do it, I, I, I can't afford good food. No, you can. Uh, I have so many conversations. We we recently got a Peloton, and I feel like I bring up the Peloton every episode. I, I love can. it. <laughs> but for folks who um, might not understand, they might be like, "Why you spend all that money on that bike?" And it's where you put your priorities because you spend your money on what you want to spend your money on, and your time on what you want to spend your time on. So how do we make that a exactly. priority? So uh, going back, bringing it all back to you, Nona. Your work is important, and we appreciate you. So having wellness accountability partners, right? We have it with goals with other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and uh, Janora got made me get a uh, made me get a Peloton bike. So it comes in two days. It took, it took me two months to get it. They on back order, but uh, but I get my Peloton bike. So I'm gonna be in there like holding each other accountable. Like oh, so uh, love it. Yeah. So with that being said, we're going to wrap everything up unless anybody has anything else they want to bring up before we get to our um, our person of the week. No, just another no. thank you to Noni. Oh, thank, you thank, so you much. Noni. thank you so much, guys. Absolutely. So, Noni, um, we, at the end of our show, we always like to honor uh, people who are in the community of doing certain things. I'm going to make it brief. I'm not going to give too much just because we're way over our time. But we like to honor someone who's doing amazing things. And with that being said, I don't know what just happened, but with that being said, um, we want to give a shout out to a guy in Africa. His name is John, um, I think it's a man, a graduate of fine arts and industrial arts from the University of Iowa, I think. Um, so he created prosthetics for darker skin tones and it's absolutely amazing. He, that's not what he does for a living. He went to a fine art school and he learned how to make these prosthetics right now at the moment, he has over 200 customers in two years. I know that his brother at some point in time lost his hand and that's what, uh, prompt him to create this. And uh, he only charges like $111 for the prosthetics. So we want to give a shout out to our, our person of the week. Um, so, yeah, that, that's it. That's what we have. So when your mama loses her foot because of the sugar, you can go to him and get a foot. <laughs> I am so okay. mad at you for saying that. Yeah. That was so rude. So bad. I know. So with all that being said, you guys, we will see you next week. Thank you for everybody joining in. Yes. Um, oh, yes. Yes, please. Say Layla. It. Layla. No. That's what I to say. Oh, well, well, yes, yes, yes. Two, two things. Yes, it is Layla's okay. birthday. Uh, Layla, you guys, is my wife. Happy birthday. And she is celebrating today. So definitely a shout out to her. Um, and a shout out, I said our BPS person of the week last week, talking about our moms, that was actually the week of Mother's Day. Last week, it was actually Abdul sharing about his book. And so I just wanted to uh -oh. show that I ordered it and you guys can do the same thing. It's available on Amazon. Ignorance is contagious. Yes. Um, although he had some 12 year old jokes and was a little bit ignorant at the end. We still love him. And I just wanted to show you that I followed through. And I can't wait Thank to do you, the same Genora. for you, Noni. Thank you. Yes. When are you gonna make me a sandwich, Malene Robinson? I'll make you a sandwich, <laughs> yes. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Right. Somebody said Abdul is crazy, somebody said. Yes, Steve, yes. he absolutely is. Abdul is. is crazy. Yes, he is. Uh, get, so, get the book, Steve. Get the book. Uh, definitely uh, check out his book. We thank you again for joining us. We will definitely see you guys next week. And um, that's about it. All right. You guys have a good night. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, next week's our last show before. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Well, I wasn't going to mention it now because I want people to, but it's all good. What were we going to say? I was going to wait. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Well, they just kidding. <laughs>
Just kidding. See you next week. <laughs> uh, we we are going to take a little bit of a hiatus, uh, but we are going to be here next week. We will continue yeah. to keep doing um, uh, some um, kind of follow ups. You know how I don't know if you guys remember how I was doing the. Uh, the black people ish in the very beginning black people shit in the very beginning which were these two to three minute uh little vlogs so we are going to continue to keep doing that from all three of us uh with our own little spin to them so you'll still be able to see us and have um some joy uh and seeing what's going on in the community we won't totally lose you for the next uh, month and a half or two months and then we'll be back um after that but we'll definitely talk about it next week and then go from there so Enjoy your we'll drink. you're going to love the title of my new show. No, we're not calling it that. <laughs> yep. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>